Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to my first series of 2021 and that is going to be I'm doing short mini reviews for Adelaide Writers Week. Now first off the ranks is Flames by Robbie Arnault. This is a lyrical fantastical Australian contemporary story. Um, I'm not quite sure how else to describe it. It is absolutely stunning. It's got kind of a fantastical magical realism to it in a very stunning Tasmanian setting and it is just beautiful. So I thought it would be best to like read the blurb because I'm not sure how else to go into the story. I think it would be best for how to describe the narrative style but the actual plot is as described as follows. In Robbie Arnault's widely acclaimed and much loved first novel, a young man named Levi McAllister decides to build a coffin for his sister Charlotte, who promptly runs for her life. A water rat swims up river in quest for the cloud god, a fisherman hunts for tuna in partnership with a seal, and a father takes the form of from fire. Answers to these riddles are to be found in this tale of grief and love across the bonds of family, tracing a journey across the southern island. It is stunning. I absolutely love this. So narrative journey wise, each chapter starts with like a nature descriptor. So coal, fire, a, uh, I think there's iron at one point and how each describe a certain emotion or a certain scene in that chapter. Each chapter usually, I think there's only a double up once or twice, but each chapter is from a different character's perspective, which is endlessly fascinating. So you, basically you're jumping heads and you're following a different character perspective as you follow Charlotte's escape from her brother or you know the fisherman how he uh, he introduces you into this world of the story which is absolutely beautiful. So there's just like this huge culmination of interweaving stories and people's perspectives with nature which is absolutely stunning. Very important imagery on the front cover of, I think, the Australian paperback um, is beautiful. You've got the water rat and the seal. Both have very strong imagery throughout this book. And uh, what I loved is that whilst it's not like a character-rich story, you still get so much emotion from it. It's like one of those really beautiful poetry, um, emotional poetry of grief and change and love because... I feel like what this book does well and what it does really beautifully is to show the many facets of love and to show the many facets of grief and how, you know, this deep abiding love can lead to different forms of grief and how it takes hold in different people, like an obsession or, you know, a disconnection or just a complete erasure of self and how grief can really affect someone's like view of life and how they view what they will be doing next or what was best for that person in hindsight. So it's really, really stunning. But then you weave into the like aspect of it, which is the nature and seeing how this kind of grief, love and loss can be felt through nature and also how nature really shows that kind of emotional upheaval through rain, through weather, through fire, through all this kind of really heavy elemental like emotions that are being portrayed. And it's just really amazingly beautiful inter interwoven, but it is a book of hope. And it's a book of hope because after all this grief, after this destruction, after this change, there is always something to hope for. There is always a connection or a new, a new possibility that can arrive from something that can be so horrendously and can cause huge upheaval in your life. There can always be something new and something hopeful for your future. And I think that in a very short novel, it encaptures that brilliantly and it kind of gives a beautiful arc and full circle to the novel. Um, so yes, I gave this five stars, five out of five. Absolutely adored it. We'll read again probably in like a year. I think it's probably going to be one of my yearly or twice yearly reads. And um, I cannot wait to see Raviano in person. He does have a new book out called The Rain Heron. So if you have read this book, let me know what you think down below. If not, and you want to know where to get a copy, I know it's not just available in Australia, it is available through a few other publishers across the world. But I hope you get the chance to read this book because it is absolutely stunning. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.